In 1976, Gary Frank Sutherden embarked on a cross-country hunting trip that ended in his unexplained disappearance. For over four decades, his family grappled with the anguish of not knowing his fate. However, in 1997, a human skull was discovered in Alaska, reigniting the hope that it might provide answers. It was not until 2022, however, with the aid of advanced DNA analysis, that the skull was conclusively identified as belonging to Gary. Although his family had given up the search, they had always wondered what happened to their relative. With the discovery of the skull and the advanced DNA test years later, they finally got some answers of what happened to Gary. So what was his story and what happened to him? This is the story of Gary Frank Sutherden. To truly understand the significance of Gary's disappearance, it is essential to delve into his life and the person he was. Born and raised in Clay, New York, sometime in 1951, Gary was described as a vibrant and adventurous young man. Growing up, he developed a love for nature and the outdoors, often embarking on journeys and seeking thrilling experiences. His family recalls him as being an individual with an infectious spirit, a zest for life, and a curious mind. Gary completed his education in 1969, graduating from Sierra High School. Following his graduation, Gary embarked on a series of journeys that took him to various rural regions across the United States and Canada. He eagerly sought out remote areas, immersing himself in the natural beauty and unique landscapes these locations had to offer. His thirst for adventure and curiosity led him to venture off the beaten path, forging his own path of discovery and growth. He would often go months and even years without seeing his family, and during his early 20s, he moved to Alaska to work on the Alaskan Pipeline, a major oil pipeline spanning 800 miles across Alaska. In 1976, Gary, along with a family friend, embarked on a hunting trip on the Porcupine River, which lies on the north side of the Arctic Circle near Canada. Sutherden's brother recalls not wanting Gary to go on this trip. He said, we hadn't seen him for years, and of course, he had made all of his plans and arrangements, and he was ready to fly in, and there was no way he was going to come home. There was nothing more I could do at that time. He was a free spirit, and had his ideas of what he wanted to do, and he did those things. So, Gary and his friend hired a plane to fly them out to Porcupine Creek, and off they went. At the time of this trip, he was 25 years old. The Porcupine River is a significant waterway located in Alaska, known for its natural beauty and its ecological importance. It originates in the Ogilvy Mountains of Canada's Yukon Territory and flows throughout northern and eastern parts of Alaska, eventually joining the Yukon River. The Porcupine River runs for approximately 600 miles, passing through pristine wilderness, remote forests and expansive tundra landscapes. The river is home to a diverse range of wildlife, including bears, which inhabit the river's surrounding wilderness. Grizzly bears and black bears are common in the region, and encountering them is a possibility for those venturing into their territory. Aside from bears, other wildlife species such as wolves and moose also inhabit the area surrounding the Porcupine River. Much like a lot of Alaska, the location of the river is truly remote, and it's not hard to get lost, so it's important to be aware of your surroundings at all times. Gary and his friend made it to Porcupine River and decided to spend a few months at this location. At some point, he and his friend decided to split up and walk different directions around the river and meet up once the river froze in spring, but Gary was never seen alive again. The circumstances surrounding his disappearance were shrouded in mystery, fueling speculation and raising numerous questions. Where did Gary go? What events transpired during his journey? Did foul play or unforeseen circumstances lead to his vanishing? These were all questions that needed to be answered. His friend ended up leaving early due to a medical problem, but no one believed Gary was in trouble until they returned in spring to pick him up, and he was not there. His family were understandably concerned and called for help. Local authorities, search and rescue teams, and concerned community members rallied together to initiate a thorough search operation. The vast expanses of rugged terrain, dense forests, and unpredictable weather conditions posed for formidable challenges to the search teams. Despite these difficulties, search parties tirelessly combed the area, scouring the surroundings for any clues that could shed light on his whereabouts. The search involved ground teams scouring the terrain, 
helicopters conducting aerial surveys, and canine units tracking scent trails. The search extended beyond the immediate area, involving neighbouring regions and potential routes. Sadly, no one was able to find him. In a tireless pursuit to unravel the mystery of what happened to Gary, his brother employed investigators and a mountain guide. His brother said, He did find my brother's sight, he found his broken glasses, he found identification. Although this was a step in the right direction, there was still no sign of Gary. As time passed, the families reluctantly embraced the tragic notion that Gary might have succumbed to the unforgiving elements. Their efforts, while valiant, were unable to bring closure to the heart-wrenching situation they faced, and Gary's whereabouts remained a mystery. What happened to Gary remained a mystery. With no signs of him, a gravestone was erected for Gary which tragically read, Gary Thrank Southerden, lost in Alaska. No trace of Gary was found until years later, when in 1997, a human skull was discovered around the area of the Porcupine River, renewing hope that it might hold the key to Gary's fate. The skull was stumbled upon by a hunter, whose curiosity led them to report the findings to authorities. The find triggered a surge of speculation and anticipation, as people began to wonder if this could finally provide the long-awaited answers about Gary's fate. For Gary's family, the news of the skull's discovery was a mixture of relief and trepidation. After years of uncertainty, and living with the assumption of his tragic demise, the possibility of finding concrete evidence offered a flicker of hope, but also fear. This was because although they had accepted Gary had died, there was still a tiny bit of hope that he was alive, living his life somewhere in Alaska. However, despite the initial excitement surrounding the discovery, obstacles hindered the immediate DNA testing of the skull. Due to its age and degradation, obtaining viable DNA samples proved challenging. In other words, tests at the time weren't advanced enough to determine whether the skull did belong to Gary. Also, the skull revealed signs of damage that hinted at a possible encounter with a bear during his journey. The skull was listed as unidentified and the cause of death was put down to a bear mauling. No further update to the case came until last year, in 2022, when investigators made a breakthrough discovery. The breakthrough came in 2022, when advancements in DNA analysis enabled scientists to conclusively identify the skull as being a close match to Gary, after matching with his second cousin. To confirm it was Gary 100%, they needed a closer match. This is when they called Gary's brother and asked for a DNA sample through 23andMe, a DNA testing company. Through the utilization of advanced genetic matching algorithms, 23andMe successively identified a genetic match between Sutherland's family members and the discovered remains. The confirmation provided a pivotal moment in the search for answers, bringing a mix of relief and grief to his family. Over four decades later, the mystery was finally over. Although the answer wasn't a nice one, Gary's family finally had some form of closure. The investigators determined that a few days after Gary and his friends separated, Gary had an encounter with a bear. He was tragically mauled by the bear and died from his injuries. Gary's brother said, we've been working on it for 45 years and it's nice to see that things came to a conclusion. Sadly, both of Gary's parents passed away before knowing what happened to their son. His remains were then cremated and sent to his brother, who planned a memorial service for his younger brother. His family today say that he spent his final days doing what he loved in a place that he loved. His sister said that's the way Gary was, so that's the life he chose. And not that he chose his death, but he chose a life that was a possibility. So we just have to allow him to have chosen what he wanted. Let me know what you think about this case in the comments below. This is not an AI channel, I do all of this myself, the research, writing, editing, thumbnails, etc. And I upload every Thursday. So if you enjoy my work, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.